sometimes life takes us down paths we never anticipated, ones we never wanted to go down in the first place. That's true for a 29-year-old man from Portland whose life changed in an instant while on a mountain bike ride thousands of miles away from home. As 207's Beth McAvoy found, it doesn't really matter the road life leads us down, it's how we navigate our way that makes the difference. <laughs> Are you going to pour out <laughs> Yeah. One teaspoon. Chris Barr and his wife, Alex Murrow, enjoy a quiet afternoon attempting to make cookies together. Chris, are you a good cook? Not a bad cook. <laughs> <laughs> Simple moments like these are ones the couple has a new appreciation for, forged by hard experiences. We met at a bike shop when I was 17 years old and he was 18. And he came over for a group bike ride, and I just thought he was the, the cutest thing I'd ever seen. So, <laughs> asked him out. <laughs> Chris and Alex have been together for 11 years. They got married in 2017. He's a super athlete and a, was a super competitor in cycling. Whether road cycling or mountain biking, being on two wheels has always made Chris happy. In college, he raced for UNH. Raced every weekend and did a group ride every night, and it was so much a fabric of like his social life and of our life together. When his engineering firm took him to Idaho in the fall of 2019, well, I knew that like the area around Boise was beautiful. So, and there's a lot of great mountain biking trails out there. He extended his trip so he could hit some trails with another coworker. We got breakfast at a cafe downtown Boise, and then walked over to pick up our rental mountain bikes. And the last thing I remember is walking out of that bike shop. Two and a half weeks later, Chris woke up from a coma. Well, when I first woke up, I couldn't walk, I couldn't speak, and then also the right side of my body was completely paralyzed. Chris would find out much later from the colleague he was biking with what had happened. We had just gone down like the steepest downhill part of the, tr uh, the ride. He said that I was a little bit ahead of him on the trails, and so he rounded the corner and saw me off my bike. I was lying face down on the ground with my bike laid down to as well. My helmet was still on me, but it was damaged as it should have been. So like it kind of like collapsed in. Chris was unconscious, his face covered in blood. He went to call 911 on his phone, but he didn't have service. So he went through my pockets and found my phone and called, and luckily I had service. He basically saved my life. It took emergency crews on ATVs an hour to reach them. The ATVs took Chris to a helicopter that transported him to the hospital. I think for a lot of people in life, there's a phone call that kind of changes everything, or at least changes your perspective on everything. Um, and that was, that was the phone call for me. Alex and Chris's family rushed to Boise to be by his side and then they waited. I had this perception that like when Chris woke up like Chris would just wake up and he'd be like hey like how's it going I missed you <laughs> what is this crazy mess and like the waking up doesn't happen in that way. I woke up and obviously Alex was there and I didn't know where I was like didn't know dates, didn't know times, because it's just so foggy. The waking up was in uh, periods. For some reason, a big memory that I have is like looking at the analog clock that they had in the room and not being able to read it. Like, it didn't make any sense to me. A lot of people think perhaps the hardest part was the moments when he wasn't opening his eyes and when he was in the ICU, but I think the harder moments were when he did start opening his eyes and it was so foggy and he wasn't there and it was that fear and feeling of like oh like is this is this our new reality like is he ever going to fully come back to us according to chris's doctors only 10 percent of people with this particular brain injury regain consciousness diffuse axonal injury so that may basically means like a whiplash of your brain and kind of like tearing. I actually actually injured the left side of my brain. So that's that's why the right side of my body was paralyzed. 
in life, we're all like people that are searching for answers to the questions that we have both around what's happening in our lives and what's happening like in the lives of those around us, especially when it's the life of someone that you love and deeply care for. Um, I wanted answers so bad and I like no one would give them to me. Chris was transferred to Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital in Boston, and there he started to really get to work, hoping to provide the answers to the questions his family had been asking. No, but I like where your head's at. 